All right. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, so uh, we have here a virtual um, lab tour with some people in our lab. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, because our lab is, um, is very much a statistics and data analysis lab, you know, there's a lot of things that happen um, uh, on computers. I think it would be fitting for us to do a lab tour virtually where we go through everyone's um, data and everyone's um, sort of uh, figures. So, uh, so you know, throughout the next few minutes, I'll be introducing everyone in the lab, and we'll introduce ourselves, talk a little bit about um, uh, what we have to show, and um, and talk about what it's like to um, uh, to work in the neuroscience statistics research laboratory. Um, so, to do that, I will share my screen first. Okay. All right. So, um, I will start out uh, and and uh, you know, tell you guys a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a fifth year PhD candidate in the lab and um, I work on data analysis in problems of, um, like many members of the lab, in problems of general anesthesia. Um, and I also work on uh, problems um, uh, regarding disorders of consciousness, so uh, patients with coma and, and um, the, uh, the wide spectrum of, uh, of disorders um, um, emerging from uh, coma. So um, something fun about me is I have a dog um, and, and something unique, I guess, about uh, the day-to-day the -day work that I do is that um, my work also requires um, data acquisition from, uh, from human subjects um, and actually human patients who are suffering from traumatic coma um, at Mass General Hospital. So, um, so a few times you know, over the course of my years in the lab, I've um, gone over there to, um, to uh, see these patients and, uh, and obtain EG recordings from them. And um, I find that really sort of um, unique about what I do. Um, so next, uh, we're going to uh, take it and uh, I'll introduce Josefina Correa, um, and she will talk about her work. Okay. Um, hi, David. Thanks for introducing me. Um, I'm a 30-year PhD candidate in BCS, and my research involves investigating the neural mechanisms underlying the transition into maintenance and emergence from propofol induced unconsciousness, and I also work on developing statistical tools for analyzing neural data. Something fun about me is that I really like to play the piano, and I also like to cook. Um, something that is unique to the kind of research that I do is that it is purely computational, so I don't collect any data, um, I don't do experiments per se, but simply focus on analyzing data primarily collected by the Miller Lab. Um, and yeah, uh, here I'm basically showing you spike rates um, recorded from these four cortical areas and um, raw rasters. Um, during unconsciousness. And here the main observation is that there's an increase in the slow delta power during unconsciousness, and we think that that's related to um, this kind of up and down states that you see in the raw arrestors. Thank you for the introduction, and I'll leave you with the next student. All right, so next up we have uh, Sandia. Thanks, David. Right. So my name is Sandia. I'm a fifth year PhD student in Health Sciences and Technology, or HST. Um, and my project is focused on another part of anesthesia, which people might not think about, which is that it's supposed to prevent the patient from feeling pain. But when you're unconscious, do you actually feel pain? And the answer is yes and no. So pain requires being conscious by definition. However, nociception is what we call the unconscious processing of pain. Um, and because pain is such a primal response, it's handled at the level of the brainstem and the spinal cord. So the biggest reason anesthesia is even necessary is to control this processing. And the goal of my project is to measure this during surgery when there's obviously ample painful, ample painful stimul simulation um, using markers of the autonomic nervous system or the fight or flight response, like skin conductance and heart rate variability. Um, let's see, one thing that's unique about my research, or I guess similar to David, but slightly differently, I, all, I collect all of my own data um, in the operating rooms at MGH. And because my data is collected during surgery and I actually have to annotate stuff, I have literally stood through 70 surgeries at MGH now um, and put my own sensors on the patient and consented my own patients um, and talked to them and, and all of that, which has been a really interesting and fun experience. So uh, next we have uh, Indy. And this is Indy's slide. Awesome. Thanks, David. Um, so yeah, my name is Indy Garwood and I am a fourth year PhD student in HST. I'm co-advised by Emory Brown and Paulina Anakiva, and kind of generally I'm working on developing methods to help us better understand and interact with the brain. In Paulina's lab, I'm developing flexible neural probes that cause less brain damage than uh, probes that are currently on the market. In Emory's lab, I'm developing statistics and machine learning techniques to decode the brain states that occur under ketamine anesthesia. And then the main goal of my project is to combine these new methods to study the mechanisms um, underlying ketamine anesthesia in non-human primates. 
And one thing that's really unique about my research is even though kind of microbes are on a micro scale and eventually going to go into brain, the first fabrication uh, step of my process is in the machine shop at MIT. So I get to really be, you know, using the lathe and all of that kind of stuff that is, is pretty um, unconventional to most um, neuroscience methods. Thanks, David. Uh, thanks so much, Indy. And something cool is that Indy is actually the only person right now in our physical lab space. Uh, so, so Indy, uh, can you show us the room that you are in? Just, just you know, uh, maybe swivel the cam camera around. Swivel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have some boxes oh, cool. right now, but we are indeed a nice big office. Everybody has their own space, but also, you know, plenty of space to talk to one another and interact. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So, uh, so next we have uh, John, who will um, go through uh, his slide. Um, all right. Can we see yeah. John's slide right now? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, my name is not on it either. I forgot to do that. But I am John. I'm a uh, fourth year student in brain and cognitive sciences and the uh, interdisciplinary doctoral program in statistics at MIT. Uh, which, if you're interested, you should check that out. Um, and something I'm currently working on is a way to a model of joint distribution over LFP and spiking. So something that we often want to measure in neuroscience is association between LFP and spiking. And in order to do this with something like covariance or mutual information, you need a joint distribution over these. And so uh, we can do this by basically introducing a latent variable so that the, uh, the distributions factorize and parameterize this as a state-based model, um, which we, use, we fit using EM. Um, and so simulations show that, you know, goodness of fit looks good with this, and we can now draw samples from the joint distribution over this. So the next things we'll be working on is um, actually designing estimators, sampling-based estimators for these measures of association. And something that um, I think is really exciting about working in the lab is that um, we have close collaborations with experimentalists, so I also work with people in the Miller lab, and um, it's really cool to be able to, you know, engage in a lot of interesting neuroscience. Uh, so you get hands-on experience with the data. You can actually talk to the people that are collecting the data. And um, it gives you a lot of insight into what problems are, uh, you know, really need to be solved from the data analysis perspective. So, yeah, that's it. All right. Thank you so much, Sean. Um, so next we have uh, Suresh, who is going to um, tell us a little bit about himself and what he does. Um, and uh, maybe a general story about the poster. Sure. Uh, thanks, David, for this nice introduction and the warning not to go too long. I might ramble a little bit here and there. Never mind. Uh, okay, so hi, I'm Suresh, and I'm a senior postdoc at NSRL. A little bit about my research journey that brought me to NSRL. I'm a mechanical engineer by training, and before I, was, I joined NSRL, I was building computational models to analyze how composite solids change shape and size. But towards the end of my PhD, a very close family member uh, was diagnosed with brain cancer, and that singular event motivated me to apply my engineering skills to help patients. And that desire brought me to MIT, and Dr. Brown gave me this opportunity to uh, work on a problem that can potentially impact patients, uh, patient care. So the problem that I was, I've been working on is to build an automatic anesthesia delivery system, and some of the schematics are there in the slide. The key idea is that we are trying to uh, build a system that will assist anesthesiologists to control the level of unconsciousness in patient in real time. It's something like an autopilot um, or your thermostat at home where you set it at 70 and uh, it blows in hot air when the temperature goes down, but when the temperature goes up, it just continues to uh, have a passive cool down, something along the same, same lines. But such systems are not approved for clinical trials in the US. To do that or to go towards that, it is important to build uh, so, uh, establish the systems uh, in uh, animal models such as non-human primates, and that's what I did. And the, my work entails to, so what I did was I built a prototype system in monkeys and made sure that it can work. And some representative data is presented in the results block of my uh, poster. Uh, David, would you mind uh, if you can play that uh, slide? There is a play button under the results. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got it. Ah, right there. So just, uh, for example, just take a look at the first two panels, and this is actual uh, data that we collected in an experiment. So initial, uh, we have a anesthetic induction. So under a predefined flow rate, uh, how a pharmacodynamic biomarker in a monkey actually go, uh, uh, it goes up and comes down. But in, after 30 minutes into the induction, we have a user-specified target. It's like setting the temperature to 70 degrees. And the controller takes over, and it automatically modulates the anesthetic level so as to maintain the biomarker at the desired depth. And you can adjust the depth. 
So what, in essence, what we're trying to do is we are trying to uh, automatically modulate the neurophysiological state during unconsciousness. And this can potentially be useful as it translates um, in future translations to humans. So that's summarizing kind of my main research. And what I like about my research is that it is a true uh, collaboration. So for example, Jake is an exp I'm an engineer by training. Jake is an experimental neuroscientist. Jake established the experimental drug and initial dose finding studies. I am uh, is now a biomedical engineer, and she was helping me run these studies. Uh, she was helping with animal monitoring. Meredith is a highly skilled veterinary technician and a an, uh, researcher who has helped me with setting up the intravenous propofol lines. Indy, uh, in addition to the work that she's pioneering already, she helped me establish the communication from the MATLAB code that I've been running the controller uh, program in to the pump. And it was very crucial to make that reliably uh, to perform for a long period of experiment. And this work was done in the uh, Earl Miller's lab. Um, he uh, he has a very nice NHP facility uh, to uh, do working uh, systems neuroscience studies. And over the vision of this project is from uh, our mentor, uh, Emery Brown. So, and uh, what I really like about the science about this research is that uh, data is governing model development. Model development is guiding experiments, and experiments is finally validating whatever we are thinking. And something fun about me, uh, recently I became a dad to a very beautiful girl, and I love, like to play with her when I get the chance. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Suresh. Um, that was a wonderful overview and a touching uh, introduction, too. Um, okay, so. I, uh, I, lastly, I will introduce uh, Gabe, who uh, is also a postdoc. And uh, Gabe, this is your slide. All right, thanks, David. Uh, yeah, so my name's Gabe, I'm a postdoc. Uh, I also, like Suresh, I work on this problem of automating anesthesia delivery, where we record EEG signals, and from that determine how much drug to give uh, to a patient. And so right here, I'm looking at just a very specific part of this problem, where we take in EEG signals, and from that, we want to automatically determine uh, how unconscious somebody is. So this is a uh, project that we just concluded in the lab, where we used techniques from machine learning to try to automatically identify from a spectrogram when a subject has lost consciousness. And what's cool is that on the left here, we're looking at these healthy volunteers in a very controlled environment. And on the right, we're looking at uh, real data from patients in the operating room. And we can see that um, you know different versions of our model seem to work pretty well. And uh, yeah, so one thing I've really enjoyed about working in this lab is um, just the wide range of expertise that everybody has. I mean, similar to what everyone else said, my background is in electrical engineering. Um, and I've just learned so much about neuroscience and statistics and signal processing. And really, it's like when you come here, whatever you want to learn, there's somebody that can teach it to you. So that's fun. And that's awesome. Thank you so much, Gabe. And, uh, and yeah, and so, so that sort of concludes a, a nice overview from uh, some of our um, lab members. Uh, a nice, a nice dive to um, our work. You know, I, uh, you know, our work actually encompasses a lot of collaborations um, with a lot of investigators um, at MIT and beyond. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, thank you for watching our uh, virtual lab tour, and I will stop the recording now. <laughs>